Greetings. My name is Dr. Sebastian Moppard, and I'm Associate Professor of Interdisciplinary Studies and Director of Distance Learning at Holy Apostles College and Seminary in Cromwell, Connecticut. Such is the interconnectivity of today's world that I live in and work out of St. Louis, Missouri, responsible for the administration of five online programs containing 450 students scattered around the globe and taught by three dozen adjunct and half a dozen full-time faculty scattered across the country. Prior to my work at Holy Apostles, I served on the faculty of Kenrick Lennon Seminary in St. Louis and was also the coordinator of instructional technology. For almost two decades, the Internet has been growing up with us. Yet because of its dynamic nature, it remains in need of an introduction at every talk I give. I usually begin by identifying cyberspace as a popular vehicle for social communications. And I add that the Church has taken notice of this phenomenon in her desire to make use of it as an extension of herself in the world. When we see a Pope with a Facebook and Twitter account, in fact, it's time even for those of us who thought the Internet was a passing fad back in 1995 to sit up and take notice, especially when Pope Benedict XVI says in his 2009 World Communications Day message, entitled, New Technologies, New Relationships, Promoting a Culture of Respect, Dialogue, and Friendship, that these technologies are truly a gift to humanity. The giver, of course, isn't Mark Zuckerman, but Christ, of whom Gaudium et Spes says, fully reveals man to man himself, and makes his supreme calling clear. For this reason, over a decade ago, back in 2002, Blessed Pope John Paul II wrote in his 2002 World Communications Day message, entitled, Internet, a New Forum for Proclaiming the Gospel, that the Internet causes billions of images to appear on millions of computer monitors around the planet. From this galaxy of sight and sound will the face of Christ emerge, and the voice of Christ be heard. For it is only when his face is seen and his voice heard that the world will know the glad tidings of our redemption. This is the purpose of evangelization, and this is what will make the Internet a genuinely human space, for if there is no room for Christ, there is no room for man. End quote. He then took the next step and said, Therefore, I dare summon the whole church bravely to cross this new threshold, to put out into the deep of the net, so that now, as in the past, the great engagement of the gospel and culture may show to the world the glory of God on the face of Christ. End quote. He ended the message with a very specific blessing. May the Lord bless all those who work for this aim, he wrote. Precisely because cyberspace, he said, can offer magnificent opportunities for evangelization, if used with competence and a clear awareness of its strengths and weaknesses. End quote. So this calls us into action. We have not only a papal mandate, but also a papal blessing for our work in this area. At Kenrick Glennon, we started with the first-year theologians, who, after their first semester in the formation program, would develop an awareness of the role and impact of media in the work of the Church. Of this encounter, I explained in an article entitled Parochial Cyberspace, the Next Generation of Parish Community Centers, published in Seminary Journal in 2005, that seminarians in many seminaries are learning the grammar of cyberspace and the value that cyberspace has as a tool for intentional communication in their diocese. Mastery of these tools is both meaningful and necessary, for it is not just today's parish for which we are preparing these men who are presently in our theology programs, but also parishes of 2010, the year in which our current pre-theology students will be ordained. That was seven years ago. We're now focusing on the year 2018 and are welcoming the Pre-Theology 1 cohort into the fall of 2012. Of course, I added back then, it is not as though our seminarians are coming to us from a vacuum. They are men who have lived through the changing social realities of the global information infrastructure and to varying degrees have interacted with it in their professional and collegial lives. Given this demographic reality, it is not too big of a step to hone this literacy into a tool for the service of the Church. And the work has already begun in the men being ordained to the priesthood. Now Father Jason Signalness, who served while a seminarian as the Director of Student Computer Services at Kenrick for two years, wrote the first master's thesis to come out of that seminary specifically dealing with the use of digital tools in parish ministry. He entitled the work 
Prophets on the Digital Continent, Guidance for Spreading the Gospel Today. Cyberspace is his Areopagus, and it is a world not unlike St. Paul's, where there is set up an altar to the unknown God. It is time we call attention to it with the words St. Paul has taught us. Open quote. Now what you worship is something unknown I am going to proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it is the Lord of heaven and earth, and does not live in temples built by hands. God did this so that men would seek him, and perhaps reach out for him, and find him, though he is not far from each one of us. Close quote. You can see, as I wrote back in 2005, how men studying to be priests are standing upon the edge of a vast, developing missionary frontier, and given proper and potent communicative tools, can be enabled in their mission of the evangelization of their people and culture in this new sphere of human interaction. So where does the support structure begin after seminary? How do we engage folks in our parishes? First, as Aristotle teaches us in his physics, we have to start with the universal before we can drill down to the particulars. In parish life, the closest we come to that is our diocesan offices. If you take a look at the structure, you note that many dioceses contain offices of information technology, like this one here in the Archdiocese of St. Louis. The office hosts a web developer, and the web developer supports to some degree the online initiatives of individual parishes. You want to check with your diocese as to what kind of help and advice they might offer and you want to make sure that your page on your diocesan website accurately represents the reality at your parish. Some site administrators may not instinctively know to update a page whenever a change in the parish is made, and you end up with incorrect data, such as the wrong mass time showing for your parish. While all parishes are unique in their needs and constituencies, furthermore, you might consider what support you can offer your diocese so that you can become part of the solution that enables the diocese to take a greater leadership role in helping all of its parishes develop online media and in coordinating consortial engagement of parishes with one another. In the Archdiocese of St. Louis, there are about 200 parishes, each of which is in some stage of developing its presence in cyberspace. The continuum ranges from a parish with no website at all to a parish that is hyper-engaged in all manner of activity that is connected in an integral way by digital means. Most parishes in the year 2012 are likely somewhere in between these extremes. From a site that has only one or a few static pages to a site that has a page for almost all of its activities and a means by which parish communities can come together via mobile technologies. On the parochial level, this mushrooming of parish websites has significant meaning for us. In addition to being a medium of exchange, cyberspace is the very place in which that exchange occurs. Mining down from the diocesan to the parochial level, we can say that the parish exists as a particular locus in which to facilitate the salvation of souls within its community of faith. The website, as an extension of the parish, can only exist within this principal goal and context. Most immediate to our ministries are our own parish communities, and if the church is going to engage these communities using modes of communication common to them, then she should do so as an intentional effort rather than allow the task to grow haphazardly and awkwardly through lack of coordination. As resources for parishioners to obtain information about their parish church, then, each website ought to have its most important information easily accessible, and that includes its mission statement, its mass times, its office directory, and a list of its committees and task forces. Other materials can be added to enrich the site, namely bulletins, homilies, schedules, parish council minutes, staff, biographies and contact information, question and answer forms, RCIA forms, PSR forms, videos, audios, pastoral reflections, photo galleries, and instant messaging with the pastor during online office hours. The educational use of virtual technologies has become rather pervasive within our society, affecting both secular and parochial educational institutions at the levels of primary, secondary, and higher education. In collaboration with the stakeholders in each local community, we need to pursue creative ways to strengthen the interaction between the home and the school, making the school website a commons in which administrators, teachers, students, and parents are brought together. In our development of these resources, of course, it is important to keep in mind the concept of the wheelchair ramp. 
If we make our parochial buildings accessible in an intentional way, we should also make our parochial cyberspace accessible in such a way. Acknowledging the difficulty in accommodating every person in every situation, we might consider those value-added features that meet the needs of persons with blindness, low vision, color blindness, deafness, learning disabilities, and technological impairments, such as an inability to view flash videos on an iPad. When properly developed, our websites will be more accessible to all persons with disabilities. Once the structure is set up for the purpose of interaction and collaboration among the various parochial stakeholders, what needs to happen is to pursue the operation of the mission within it. Part of that mission is our teaching apostolate, which, if done well, will draw people back into the parish for the liturgies. They'll come to own the idea that the Eucharist is the source and summit of Christian life, precisely because of the fact that they'll be drawn into the life of the parish while on the go, via their mobile devices, through activities conducted through social media that show up on their iPhones in the form of such things as Facebook posts and Twitter tweets. We have opportunities to strengthen families by educating parents on the destructive nature of pornography, by teaching them how to monitor their children's behavior online, by providing them with content that will build up the community. The family, which is the most basic social unit, isn't preserved through the media, but it is our use of this media that can enable it to grow in its understanding of and response to the Eucharist. What can you do, then, in your own parish? Though we started with the universal in the form of the diocese in order to mine down to the particular in the form of the parish church, we can now turn that around and say that you want to take personal responsibility for that particular church by contacting your diocesan office to let them know you're going to get started. You can also say that you're establishing or missioning a parish media council, and you'd like to know what other parishes in the diocese have done likewise. You then want to contact the pastors of those parishes and find out from them what's working. Next, you want to review that list you've gathered against the realities within your own parish. And, with stakeholder input, you want to start building your web so that a structure emerges that has the potential for being highly interactive and engaging. What you're pursuing isn't a website. It's energy for parish life. The digital media you employ in that pursuit is only a means to that end. Now that you've watched this video, please scroll down to the blog and post your thoughts on these two questions. How is the internet currently being used in your parish? In what ways do you feel that you can strengthen your parish ministry through the use of it? May God's blessings continue within you as you work toward the good of His church.